Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jen Cheney. I'm the Vice President of Franchise Development for Right at Home, and thank you for joining us for this 15-minute franchisee interview. Today, I am interviewing my dear friend, Reed Greer. Reed, how are you today? Good. How are you? Good. I'm awesome. Thank you. Um, why don't we just start uh, with a simple introduction? So your name, location, uh, number of years you've been a franchise owner, and number of territories that you own. So my name is Reed Greer. Um, been a franchise owner since March 27th of 2020. So interesting timing. Uh, we are, I own four territories in Miami, Florida. Awesome. Happy almost anniversary. Um, okay. So what was your background before you became a franchise owner? So I started my career in investment banking. And so what we were doing there is I was representing private equity buyers or private equity firms sell their businesses to other private equity firms, as well as strategic buyers. So I was working uh, on a sell side mergers and acquisitions team for a pretty large investment bank based in Minnesota. Um, I was working out of their Charlotte office. Um, after two years there, um, I transitioned to the private equity world. So it was a lower middle market private equity firm uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina as well. Uh, we were primarily focused on uh, acquiring businesses between you know, 20 and 50 million of, of sales. Um, the reason I like that world is, you know, meeting founders, businesses, meeting business owners, meeting people who really started uh, their businesses from the ground up um, and learning their stories, learning their backgrounds, meeting their team um, really resonated with me. Um, so after three years in Charlotte and private equity there, I transitioned to a pretty large private equity firm in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, after six months at that firm, I realized that I wanted to own my own business. Um, so that's when I quit my job and acquired an existing right at home franchise in Miami, Florida. Okay, perfect. So to be clear, so the people that are listening, Reed did purchase a resale opportunity. We've got a good mixture of individuals who purchase resales and individuals that uh, purchase a brand new territory and start from scratch. So Reed, why did you specifically choose a right at home resale opportunity? Yeah, so I was looking at a lot of different types of businesses in a lot of different industries. So I was mainly focused on uh, service-based businesses due to the low capital, relatively low capital investment you would need to run that type of thing. Um, I was looking at you know, parking lot sweeping. I was looking at plumbing, uh, some franchise businesses, some not franchise businesses. Um, I looked at uh, commercial locksmithing. It was kind of all over the place. Um, you know, whether it was consumer facing or B2B services, um, it didn't really matter to me. Um, but when I came across um, uh, Right at Home and the franchise located in Miami, um, you know, it was, the, it was probably the well, most well-run business I looked at. Uh, the former owner is a great guy, did a great job with the business. Um, I attended my discovery day in January of 2020 uh, in Omaha, Nebraska, and had a great time meeting people such as Jen. Um, at, at, the, at the corporate location. Um, I just felt at home there. Um, you know, I met with a bunch of other businesses and I just, I didn't get the same vibe. It was, it was really, it was an intangible feeling I had. Um, and so, you know, obviously the business in Miami needed to be up to snuff, but, you know, meeting everybody at the corporate office really hit, hit it home for me that it was a good opportunity. Um, awesome. and, it's, and, it's, and it's been great ever since. Good. I love hearing that selfishly. Yeah. Uh, okay. The first so person I met. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I would normally ask the next question of walk me through a typical day, but I suppose maybe a little bit of that plus maybe explain to our listeners what role you play in your business as the owner of the business. We've got a lot of franchise owners that yes, they own the business, but what is, what is the hat that they wear? For the most part, you know, what is walk me through a typical day, but really defining what is your role in the business and perhaps that has changed since you first took it over to where you are today and kind of walk, uh, walk our listeners through that. Yeah, so at the beginning, you know, obviously it was a resale opportunity so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as much of, you know, starting from scratch as it would be for many franchisees entering, entering the right at home system. Um, so, the, you know, really the first year, especially with COVID and, you know, I remember my first month being on the job, we were dealing with the PPP, uh, or sorry, PPE supply chain shortages. 
Um, so th the whole month of April, 2020, I was just focused on getting the proper PPE for my caregivers. Um, but, yeah. you know, as we went through COVID, it was really drinking from a fire hose and um, I was very involved, you know, it was, it was really just three pe operational people in the office. So I was involved in everything. Um, and, and, and I would always recommend to be involved in everything at first, even if you're buying a resale, there's no better way to learn than just to dive in. Um, yeah. But, you know, over the last, you know, six months to a year, I've, I've tried to transition to working on the business and not in the business. Um, you know, I would say these days, 80% of my time is just thinking of ways to grow the business, whether that's new, new service offerings, whether that's to go into skilled nursing or, you know, do offering specialized services with Alzheimer's. Those are a couple of good examples. Uh, mergers and acquisition acquisitions, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for ways to grow the business inorganically. Uh, so talking to local independent owners um, that who are potentially looking to sell, um, you know, developing po policies and procedures to, you know, keep us as buttoned up as possible. You know, sometimes that, you know, boosts compliance, sometimes that boosts compliance and boost revenue. So, you know, thinking of ways uh, to improve revenue, improve gross margin, um, you know, from a sales perspective, my sales and marketing uh, person will schedule schedules meetings all, all week. Uh, and some of those I will attend, especially if it's a more strategic, um, more strategic contact. Um, we're also members of a lot of Chamber of Commerce, commerce uh, organizations in Miami-Dade County. So I'm, I'm finding myself going to several, multiple meetings uh, throughout the county in any given week. Um, I'm a financially oriented person, so I'm still involved in the accounting um, and billing and payroll. Um, while my team prepares the billing and payroll for me, uh, I kind of hold the pen and I, um, I essentially finish the job with billing and payroll. Uh, billing every, every week and payroll every other week, it takes max an hour each week. Yeah. Uh, and then accounting, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one in my business that has access to QuickBooks, not because I don't trust other people, but I always say, if I don't know what's in my bank account, know what's going, what's going in and out, then I shouldn't own this business anymore. Mm -hmm. um, that's just my view. And then I th I'd say the last part of my day-to-day -day job is vendor rationalization. So I'm always uh, thinking of different vendors to use. Um, and, 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 you know, if I find a good vendor, I, will always contact other right at home owners and recommend those vendors. So um, mainly thinking of ways to grow the business, but also get involved operationally at times as well. I love it. Okay, so of all of the support that right at home provides, if you had to choose one, what, do, what support do you, do you find the most valuable? coming from right at home corporate, because we, we provide a lot of support and in multiple ways, multiple departments, but for you and running your business, what support do you find the most valuable that we provide? Yeah, so I think it's a, there's, it's a two part answer. So, you know, you have the corporate level support that, you know, right at home uh, employees in Omaha and, you know, people who are involved in the corporate organization. And then I find support as well from other franchisees. So, you know, the first year I can say, um, right at home was amazing with regard to dealing with COVID. So right at home, the franchisor put together town halls every single week to keep us up to date on ever-changing legislation. They had uh, a, a big time labor attorney that would jump on uh, a call, the calls with all the owners and answer any questions that we may have yeah. and devote really a lot of resources to helping owners get through COVID at the beginning and throughout. Mm -hmm. um, as, you know, as we are at the, hopefully at the tail end of this pandemic, um, I find the biggest value now is uh, my, my uh, business performance coach, um, bouncing ideas off of, off of him. Um, and also him connecting me with other franchisees. Uh, you, know, for, you know, I mentioned skilled nursing earlier. If we wanted to go do the specialized nursing services um, or offer those types of services, um, you know, my business coach has connected me with other owners that have gone through the same process. Um, and, um, and yeah, just really bouncing ideas off of corporate folks as well as other franchisees. I just, I love talking to other owners, you know, new new owners, people who've been in uh, the business for 15, 20 years and, you know, everything in between. And that's, you know, that's the best way to, to really learn because those are the people that are in the trenches every day. Great. I love it. Okay. So we're going to back up a little bit. So give our listeners one piece of advice as they're doing research on right at home. So somebody who is thinking about joining the right at home system 
thinking about coming to a discovery day, they're doing their research on the business. What's one piece of advice that you would give them to say, make sure that you do this as you're researching right at home. Don't forget to do this or check this, or is there something specifically that you did that you were like, man, every franchise, every future franchise owner should do this research as they're researching for a home care company uh, to join? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say before jumping in, um, and this is this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. It's you know, part of the validation phase with Right at Home is to talk to as many owners as possible. And okay. um, you know, I think corporate rep- recommends five to ten. You know, I would I would say call as many as you, you possibly can. Learning about what what's you know what they would do over again, what they uh, what they wouldn't do over again, any advice okay. for a new owner, um, things like that. Because you know. Although corporate, everyone at corporate at the corporate office is extremely helpful. Um, again, you know, but learning from the people who are in the trenches every day, um, especially amidst the last two years and the ever-changing la- landscape that we're dealing with, um, you know, talking to as many owners as possible is the best advice I can give. Yep, and it's so absolutely true. Um, what a better way to learn about what it's going to be like being a franchise owner than talking to them directly. So. That's the general consensus is that's the most important part of the research process. So it's great for you to uh, confirm that that was the case for you as well. So second half. So let's just pretend somebody has just opened or, you know, um, somebody watching right now actually moves forward, becomes a right at home franchise owner. What's the number one thing that they've got to focus on right after they open their business? So a piece of advice, I know it's a little bit different for you because it, you, you literally open your doors like as COVID was just beginning. So your, yeah. your entrance into the right at home family was a little bit different um, than most, but what's one piece of advice that you would give somebody who's just becoming a, a brand new right at home franchise owner and opening their business from the start? Yeah, I would say um, invest in your business. And that goes, you know, for, you know, first of all, you need to find good people to work, uh, mm-hmm. to work for you and under you um, because those people you know, your business is only going to go as far as those people will take you. You know, you can, you can do all, you can work as hard as you want. Um, but unless you have a good team behind you, you're not going to be able to grow. Um, and you know, once you find a good team, hold on to those people. And the way you hold on to them is by investing in them, you know, whether that's incentivizing them or just treating them the right way. Um, and that you can do that in a variety of ways, but invest in your business. Don't be, don't, I wouldn't say worry about, don't worry about the bottom line too much, you know, obviously bring enough home to, to, to support you and your family, but invest in your business, invest in your people. And that's, you know, that'll, that'll carry you a long way. That's great. I love it. Okay. Reed, that's all I've got. Piece of cake. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for the time. Great. You bet. Have a wonderful day. You as well.